I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're diving deep into the heart of West Virginia with Marcus Wilkes as we explore his revealing book, Freedom of Change, A History of McDowell County, West Virginia. We will discover a community bound by its history yet striving towards the future. Join us as we uncover the intertwined stories of freedom and constraints that shape this unique region. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Marcus, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Uh, thank you for having me, Logan. And again, thanks Atticus Publishing also for their oh, support. My pleasure. Glad to have you on the show. What inspired you to write about McDowell County and its complex history? Uh, my profession as an educator, extension educator, I came to McDowell County and I was just thrown back by the amount of history that's here in McDowell County and the people that made the history happen. A lot of good people came from McDowell County that you may be familiar with. Absolutely. Tell us about some of those people. Well, some of those people uh, you may know. Uh, for instance, uh, Emmanuel Stewart. Uh, those persons that are in uh, the boxing arena knows Emmanuel Stewart because he established Crunk Gym, mm -hmm. a place where people like Sugar Ray Leonard and uh, Muhammad Ali and various uh, Thomas the Hitman Hearns, they all uh, uh, work uh, trained and worked out. Practice at, yeah, yeah, practice at that. As well as Steve Harvey. Now, I'm sure you know Steve Harvey. Yeah. His family is originally from uh, McDowell County, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps an artist like uh, Bobby Womack. Uh, his uh, family is from McDowell County as well, and they uh, left quite an impression on the world of, of uh, entertainment, for instance. Absolutely. They have people. made an impact for sure. I'm sorry I interrupted you. What were you going to say? Uh, I'm just summarizing uh, those uh, features up about the people of McDowell County. Mm. Another person you may be familiar with. For instance, it's Homer Hickam. Um, I don't know if many people have seen the movie October Sky, for instance, mm -hmm. about uh, how they supported the space race back there in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the science that uh, they used was based upon the discoveries of Homer Hickam, mm -hmm. uh, the October Sky. Uh, he's, he's also a great artist. He wrote several books, a lot of good people, uh, more than I can mention right now. Well, you've mentioned quite a few. It's yeah. quite an impressive list, just the few names you rattled off. Tell us why the book is called Freedom with Chains. Um, well, if you become familiar with the history of McDowell County, mm -hmm. you find that it, the county was established because neither the state of West Virginia nor the state of Virginia wanted to claim this terrain back there in the early 1800s because it was a very mountainous area. And the people at that time were very independent. They did not want any outside influences coming to these mountains of West Virginia way back when. Uh, that's what, uh, one of the reasons, uh, although it's called Freedom with Chains, back then during the Civil War, there was not an issue of slavery here in the mountains of West Virginia. So many of the people the, the slaves that escape one route that they may have taken is through the mountains of West Virginia because it would have been very difficult to track anybody following the Indian trails through these mountains. Uh, one author 
threw this out. He was saying that back there in the olden days, there was a mind war going on. And even though at that time, a sheriff and his deputy was shot in dead, uh, in broad daylight hmm. on the Capitol steps, I mean, in the county steps of the courthouse. Yeah. No one would come forward, even though they saw who shot and killed the sheriff and the deputy. Hmm. No one would come forward to say who shot and killed the sheriff and his deputy, Sid Hatfield and Ed Chambers. So the word got around that if you come to McDowell County, you could kill somebody and get away with it. There were several factors like that, that, you know, that where the phrase, the free state of McDowell County evolved. So even though it may have been some freedom there for various causes, mm -hmm. this county is still chained to the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. um, coal is the major economic driver here in this county. This county is very impoverished because the rest of the country it has moved on into the digital world. And the county is struggling to catch up to the digital world. But uh, there's a lot to be said about that. So they'll change to the past mm. based on the economy and such. But back there in the day, a phrase was, form was formed which called, which referred to the county as the free state of McDowell County. Mm. So when I put the two pieces together, you know, the, mm. the, the uh, title Freedom with Chain evolved, and there you have it. Well, it's very, very impactful, and it gets one's attention, which is the uh, purpose of a uh, title for sure. What do you hope readers take away from your book? Well, I'm hoping that the readers will take away how this country evolved from Jamestown, Virginia, which was the first settlement on the mainland, mainland America, how the people began to migrate westward mm -hmm. to the point that they became residents of McDowell County. I mean, back in the day, it was easy for someone from England to explore this region and say, I claim this in the name of King James. Mm -hmm. And the people, uh, the Native Americans that was living here, they had no idea who King James is or was. But eventually, when you talk about the migration and the evolution of, of this county, you will find out the role that this county played as far as the promotion of the Industrial Revolution. Because when coal was king, I mean, this county uh, helped spur the Industrial Revolution, particularly uh, uh, building factories uh, for those people that own factories in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and so on and so forth, they became enormously wealthy through the coal manufacturing here in McDowell County. And this county has relied upon that coal economy. And it, as such, it has been lost in time, shall I say? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I'm hoping that the readers will take away the fact that many places that contributed to the development of this country, you know, get stuck in a cycle and they find it difficult to move forward. Mm. There are many reasons why this county uh, evolved. 
And when you're talking about the migration of people from Jamestown, Virginia, onto places like uh, McDowell County, West Virginia, you find that there were many reasons for people to settle here because at first, at first, Back in 19, I mean, 1880, there were less than 300 residents in this county. Wow. And now, and it evolved eventually to over 100,000 people, particularly during the coal, uh, the coal revolution, the coal revolution, shall I say. Yeah. And most of them came because of the economy, because of the mining of coal. But it took those uh, great people, those great businessmen, to have the vision to open tunnels through these mountains to cover these gorges so that, that they can make the roads to get all of this coal out. And there's a tremendous amount of coal still being mined here today. However, the people here have not benefited from yeah. The coal that has been mined, uh, the coal, the timber, and other uh, fossil fuels such as that. So, even though there's riches that have been made in this county, the people just seemingly have been left behind. Yeah, and that's an important note that uh, wealth has been generated. People have been made rich, but the masses have been left holding the bag in many cases with a damaged environment, with dirty air, and without yes. any resources to show uh, from a region that, like you said, literally fueled the Industrial Revolution. The name of the book yes. is Freedom with Chains, A History of McDowell County, West Virginia. It is an amazing read. You will discover a community bound by its history, striving for the future, and it has been all put together by a remarkable author, Marcus Wilkis. And it's been my delight to have him join us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Marcus. I think you said that perfectly, Logan. I think you've read the book. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's very absolutely. Good. Thank you yep. so much. My pleasure. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time. Okay. <laughs>